Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the second video about this project. In my previous video I slapped a 240mm AIO on a Dusty Blower style 1080 Ti, turning it from this into this. If you haven't seen the video, the link is in the description. So I ran a couple benchmarks before and after the installation to see how much of a difference it actually made. To test the attempts I ran Unich in Heaven on 1080p Ultra for a few times to soak the temps and then ran the benchmark. The old cooler climbed to its max temps in under 2 minutes, the GPU diode hitting 85C and hotspot climbing all the way to 98C, that equals to 183 and 208 in Fahrenheit. At this point the card is clearly throttling and the fan is screaming at a very unpleasant The end results are clear. The average FPS shows a solid 19 frame increase and max FPS has shot up by almost 34. The min FPS isn't relevant since that only shows the result of a single dip and both minimums were clogged at the hiccup at the start of the bench. 
The new total score is 3468, going up by 481. But I ran heaven just to test the temps. To get a more precise info on the performance, I went with the benchmark in the shadow of the Tomb Raider. So let's start with 1080p on high settings. Yeah, the difference is evident from the get-go, but let's break the results down more at the end. The amount of rendered frames increased by 10% and the average FPS has raised by 9. But we want to concentrate on the more GPU related info here. The system has been much less limited by the GPU, resulting the GPU bound percent drop by a huge 20%. The min FPS shot up by 15. A 17% increase in the minimum is significant and gives a much more stable experience. The max FPS went up by a whopping 24 frames, a good 12% increase, and while this is not the most important factor, I'll take that W any day. The average FPS bumped up by 18, up by over 15%, and the trend continues in the 95% FPS, that went up by 15. This equals to 15.5%, and the difference is clear during gameplay.
On Ultra, the difference is even greater. The min FPS went up by 16, an incredible 21% increase. You'd have to be blind not to notice the difference, and the reduction in micro stuttering makes the game feel a lot more responsive. The max FPS raised by 27, a solid 15% increase, and again, not the most important thing, but it's good implication of the performance uplift. The average got a bump of 18 FPS, another 17% gained, but the 95% difference is what we are most interested, and that bracketed up by a remarkable 19.5%, a great 16 FPS difference. Now, all this means that the GPU that was earlier the bottleneck around 88% of the time is much less of a hindrance now, and the bound percentage dropped by 38% all the way to 50%. So was this worth the hassle? Well, the cost per frame was somewhere between 5 to 8 euros, so performance-wise the project wasn't a huge win. The gameplay is clearly smoother and it makes the experience much more enjoyable, but if you're expecting a completely new GPU then you might be disappointed. But let's look at this from another angle. The GPU is cooler and way more silent. Earlier, if I booted up an even slightly demanding game, the noise was horrible. Now, even the most demanding game can't make the GPU scream, and this makes gaming an absolute pleasure. Another thing you need to realize is the thermal headroom this brings. Earlier, the card throttled and overclocking it was clearly impossible. Now this is a completely different story and opens the possibility to untap even more performance. Now, would I do this again? Definitely. It was easy, affordable solution, and I had fun doing it. So I'd absolutely recommend people with similar problem to look into this. So thanks everyone for watching, and if you want to see more about this or have questions, leave a comment. I'll read every one of those, and I'll try to answer them to the best of my abilities. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up or leave a follow. I really appreciate it. Thanks and see you in the next video.